different ships that go to different ships for annual inspection. We came in on, on Friday. We've been at sea for about a week, uh, cleaning and painting, getting everything ship shaped. We came in, all of our ammunition was down below in the ammunition locker. And uh, all the watertight doors was open, getting ready for inspection on Monday morning. Saturday night, me and uh, my two friends, Cootie Blackburn and Julie Burke, was down in the gunnery office where Cootie was a yeoman striker. The yeoman is a bookkeeper. And uh, we played pinochle that night. Well, we quit about, about midnight. And they was going to sleep down in the gunnery office. And we, we had agreed Sunday morning to get to 8 o'clock in Liberty Bowl over to the recreation center. If you know the story of diagram where it says AIEA, that was where the rec recreation place was. That was going to catch it. If you notice the line of the battleship, Joe Coleman is tied up outboard of Murrah. And we had to catch Liberty Bowl to go to the recreation center. We were going to play baseball. I got up early that morning, Sunday morning, which I always do anyway. I had a shower, went and had breakfast. I went down to the gunnery office where Coolidge and uh, Junior was sleeping. I woke him up, tried to get him to get up, and uh, told him to catch eight o'clock boat to the recreation center. They were still sleepy. They said, no, they said, uh, you go on, and we'll catch a nine o'clock every boat. They run every hour on there. And I kept begging them, they said, no. So I left the gunnery office, as I got top side, just meaning I stepped on the top side, the first torpedo hit the Oklahoma. Jap planes was everywhere. There's a blind bowl. You could even see the pilots. The Oklahoma, uh, where we was moored, I knew it wouldn't submerge all, all together. What I had in mind, I knew it was going to roll over. And I thought, well, I'll just roll, roll over and walk it as it rolled over. The fourth torpedo hit the Oklahoma, and it knocked me over in, into the water. By that time, the Arizona and other battleships had been hit. Arizona uh, sunk just straight down. The water was all, all on fire, oil, from all the other ships. I started swimming, and, and the only way you could swim was under underwater. Because all, all the top of the water was on fire with oil. And I'd swim underwater as far as I could. I'd come up, do my hands like that, knock the fire and oil out of the way, and uh, get my breath and down, down again, I'd go. If you notice where the Oklahoma is on your paper, if you notice Port Island Naval Air Station, to your right looking at the diagram, that's where I, that's where I was headed for. I had to swim all the way around where the Arizona went down, around, around the Nevada, and yeah, onto uh, Fort Allen. The distance, the distance is like swimming. I'll say from here to uh, where the state highway office government is up there, where the bridge is. And uh, of course, I was born to raise here in Bible. I spent my early years uh, in the river all the recreation I had. And I was lucky enough to, uh, to uh, know how to swim good. After, after Pearl Harbor attack, I stayed, I stayed in Fort Island the biggest part of the day. And uh, on the other end of Fort Island was a Naval Hospital. And I worked my way up to the Naval Hospital and uh, see if I could be any help up there. And I stayed there until uh, late Sunday afternoon. I made my way over to the submarine base. You know, on the lower right-hand corner is the submarine base. I made, I made my way over to the submarine base. You can also little red dot, little red circles at the sub-base, then, then that was fuel tanks. To give you an example of how big they are, each one of them have 500,000 gallons of fuel. That they was the fuel 
for the whole Navy, Air Force, and everything. <coughs> All kinds of fuel. The Japs made a mistake for not hitting them. Why? I, uh, I'll, never, I'll never understand. I spent, I spent the night at the submarine base. I had uh, gum grease on, of course I was all oil, oil all over me. And they had a big barracks out of it. Of course, I was scared to death after I uh, looked over the, uh, the harbor and seen what damage it was. That night, about, uh, about 9 30, I decided to go into the barracks and find me a bunk. And I went in, I just laid down. And somebody come in and slammed the screen door. And it just sounded like a bomb going off to me. Right out there I came. And uh, I slept on the ground the rest of the night. On Monday morning, I, I was signed to USS San Francisco with heavy cruiser. Monday afternoon, we left Pearl Harbor with uh, another cruiser and four destroyers. We left Pearl Harbor. We stayed at sea for 265 days without coming back in. What we was doing, we was hitting the Jap Islands that they took, took over. We just hit and run, make the Japs think that we had a big force. What we was doing was waiting on our uh, other ships to come from the West Coast and East Coast. About to lay an action. If you notice on your left hand side of Fort Island is the Utah the battleship. Utah is one of the oldest battleships. Uh, all the superstructure then took off of the Utah and it looked like a carrier. That's, that's the reason the Japs on kick. They thought it was a carrier. Which they'd use the Utah to get on the way to go out and then the planes. Fort Allen and the carriers would, uh, would bomb uh, Utah. Instead of using bombs, they used paper bombs with different color dyes in water so they could tell who, uh, who, who done the hit. And uh, that's the reason they sunk to Utah. That morning, we lost 11 battleships, a number of cruisers, destroyers, supply ships, repair ships, and so on. Uh, I stayed in the Navy. I came out in 1946, and uh, I've gone to uh, uh, the National Fort Harbor Survivor Association. Being, being one of the uh, founders of the National Association, which was formed in 1951 in New York, I served. I served as president of the National Association for two years. I belong to the uh, Blue Grass Chapter in Pearl Harbor Survivor Association, Chapter Number One, which I helped uh, organize. We have uh, 61 members at the present time. I served as president for two terms. It was six of us uh, formed the chapter, and I still, I still belong there. I belong to the USS Oklahoma Association. And uh, the ones that belongs to it is survivors of the USS Oklahoma Association. At the present time, uh, something happened to one of them in the last three weeks. There are three of us left of that association. It's the last man organization. And uh, as I say, I went aboard the Frisco. We stayed to 265 days. While aboard the USS San Francisco, we was uh, involved in 19 major engagements, sea engagements. The USS San Francisco was awarded two President Union citations. The San Francisco was the most decorated warship in the United States Navy during World War II. <coughs> I got off in Oklahoma and uh, I was. Uh, Skipper of uh, Seco and Tub until my uh, discharge in 1946. I know uh, somebody asked me, do I, do I mess with two friends? After 51 years, I still do. At night, sometimes, uh, my 
I'm laying in bed, I can see them. I can see them that morning as I was talking to them, trying to, trying to get them to get up. Of course, the torpedo hit uh, where they're at was below the water line. And where the torpedo hit was about exactly just about where they're at. Or nothing was ever found of them, their bodies or nothing. Bill Coma was raised uh, later on and uh, had such uh, damage to it that they decided not to try to put it back in uh, service and they sold it for scrap on. They told to start to tow it, they stripped it, start to tow it back to San Francisco and it sunk on the way to uh, the states, which I'm, I'm glad it did. And, uh, it gives me great pleasure uh, to talk about the attack of Pearl Harbor. It, uh, it hurts me in a way, but, uh, but, but I think I'll wait to the young people to tell them about it. Never want to forget the attack on Pearl Harbor. A whole lot of questions asked. Did they know it was coming? They've been pros and cons of that. And uh, sometimes I think, I believe they, they knew it was coming. Sometimes I doubt it. But I can tell you one thing the Admiral Jim, uh, and uh, General Short took the front responsibility of Pearl Harbor. To me, they weren't no more uh, responsible than, than other people in Washington was. And I feel, I feel that I've been uh, really blessed with being able to survive the Pearl Harbor attack. Nobody, you can see films, you can see pictures, but nobody can explain what took place all, uh, uh, they, they really done the damage. They had a good spy, uh, <coughs> Marine Yard in Pearl Harbor, the Japs did. They knew, they had mapped, you know, knew what every ship was at, and had them by name. And uh, like I say, when I came up side and I seen the Jap planes, some of them were close enough I had. If I could have a baseball, I'll, I'll be back at it. That's how close it was. Of course, you don't get scared by the things going on. But that is over, and I look across the harbor, and all the ships are sunk and everything. I really got, I really got scared, and I feel like it's a great pleasure for me to be here to be able to talk to you. And I would like to say this to you. I quit high school to go in the Navy when I was in the second year of high school. I would have given anything in the world if I'd have finished my high school and went on to college. And I'd I like to challenge you right now to set a goal in life for yourself and to achieve this goal to get your education. You get your education, you have it up here, nobody can tell you what to And you apply yourself, you can reach your goal, and you can have anything that you want. <coughs> but by, there are three things that keep you from reaching your goal. That's laziness, alcohol, and drugs. And believe me, I know what alcohol and drugs will do to you. I've been the chief bailiff of the four courts we have here in the county for the last seven years. I've seen so many young people, young people, go away their life in alcohol and drugs, especially drugs. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Set a goal in life for yourself to reach. Get your education. You got the greatest facilities they are right here. You got dedicated teachers. You got one of the best schools in the state of Kentucky. Because I've seen it grow down through the years. I've always backed the school 100%, and I'll do anything I can for school, because I know what education means. So please, 
Set a goal in life for yourself to reach. Without a goal, you're not accomplishing nothing. Set a goal in life for yourself. And reach this goal. And you can through education. And don't let alcohol or drugs take that away from you. Because there's so many young people that have to go away to life on alcohol and drugs. And any time, any time that I can help any of them in any way, I'm listening on the phone book. You can call me any time, day or night. I'm, uh, I never want to forget this, the time when I was your age. Oh, a whole lot of people when you up here, they do. But for me, you boys and girls, the most precious thing we got in this nation. And uh, set your goals in life and reach it. Now, if any of you has it, has it. I, I might say this. The Oklahoma, we'll, we'll talk about the guns in that board. They had 14 inch guns. Pretty powerful guns. They, shoot, they could shoot accurately 21 miles. 21 miles from here to Alabama. They could hit the target. Because, because we could. Of course, the battleship is obsolete anymore. Of course, our fire could change that during <coughs> World War II. Uh, are there any questions any of you wants to ask me? If you do, uh, I'll, I'll try to answer them as best I can. worried that they'd be back uh, that night or maybe Monday morning. Uh, of course, the only reason, the only reason that they didn't uh, uh, come back or try to land troops in there or anything, their supply line would, would have been too, too far away to uh, spot their troops and so on and so forth because it was closer to California. And uh, if they would have invaded all in the wild, what Fort Harvey is, uh, they couldn't have held on to it because the supply line had been too great. And they knew it. But the only mistake they made was not hitting the, these fuel tanks that they had, they'd been all sure. Could they, could they have taken from Harvey? Very easy. Very easy. Very easy. Because see, when they hit Fort Harbor, they hit all the army bases. It can fill all of them. And they stored it. They stored all the planes that were on the ground. They stored all the barracks and hangars. They had every hundred days. And every base there was. And I'll walk you out the point. They knew what they were doing. They, it was well planned. Very well planned. I've got all kinds of questions. <coughs> they can just support you got some too. I'm sure you're bound to have some questions in your mind. Anybody like to ask, ask a question? There's no restrictions on every question you want to ask. Because you people have seen the video, you should have a question or two. Susan, you and Gary. Derek, I think you saw part of it. Anybody got any questions? If you don't have it, I might stir up something, starting some myself. Uh, I don't know what you say something about it was a total surprise attack. In our studies, in the video we watched the other day, it told about uh, the one I saw about Walter Cronkite in the 20th century episode, told about one spy they had. The Japanese overlooked the harbor and he took a mental picture of all these, of all where the ships were. And last night on the program that you and I both saw, I, I would inform the students about it, but I didn't know it was on. On Discovery Channel, they had a new, uh, new program about Pearl Harbor, I think it's an hour and a half. Mr. Robinson watched it as well. In that program, they told about how Pearl Harbor in Hawaii was like an impregnable fortress, something like Gibraltar, and that there's no way that the Japanese could take it, and that the army was defending the, more or less, against attack from within because the 40% of the island were Japanese or something. Is that true, or? Oh, yes, they, they, uh, they had their uh, firing. I know, uh, 
on the Sunday night. They were doing well and so on and so forth on some, some of the damaged ships. And uh, they, they won the uh, Japanese, uh, part Japanese, right? he was doing some welding. And uh, one of the Navy men, second one, uh, radio man, finally figured out he, he was sending old messages with a welder as he was welding to the other spies. And it didn't take him very long to round all, all the Japanese up and, uh, and put them where they couldn't do them. The other two Piper boys you mentioned, well, they, did they go to Piper High School? They went to Piper High School. We all, we all went together. You gave one name, Coolidge Black, and I remember that. The other was Sparks and Junior Burke. Junior Burke. They was all born and raised, raised here. And uh, the funny thing, though, we, uh, the, the three of us joined, joined the Army first. We was all the ones in the Army. We, we joined here. They sent us to Louisville. Took us out to Fort Knox, right sworn in, wasn't sworn in yet. They just given us a physical. And uh, I think it was in February. We looked out a big plate window there. There were them soldiers out there just uh, filming it was muddy and snow. They'd make them they'd make them lay down. They'd lay down and the sergeant would come up and put his foot on their in their back and push them further down. We made up a mind by then that, that wasn't for us. We just won't come back to file. They put us up that night. Next morning, they didn't finish our, uh, our examination. They had a desk there, and they had a book. They laid out a book. And it had a series of dots on the each pages and a number to get there. And they was going to give us our examination, and they asked us uh, uh, what number was on that page. I remember a junior said, uh, what page? And uh, our sergeant said, uh, in that book. Who just said, what book? <laughs> said, on the table. And said, what table? So finally they found it. They figured out what we were doing. So uh, they put us on the bus to come back home. We come back home on uh, Wednesday. We joined the Navy. <coughs> we went in the Navy. We didn't walk up through the Army after, after seeing that. Now, I'm sure after the attack on Pearl Harbor, I know I remember how the country reacted towards the Japanese. And I'm sure your feeling was pretty strong about the Japanese after the attack on Pearl Harbor. You probably probably so. But could you tell us, is this too personal, or could you tell us how long it took you to get over that? that? Well, Mr. Davis, it took me a long time. But uh, I'm not completely over it. Somebody said, well, the next generation here. That's true. But to me, this, this is a personal thing. Uh, every time somebody asks me how I feel, I think about my two friends. And if they hadn't been for Japanese, they'd be alive today, change it And uh, I, I know, I, I know it's uh, possibly wrong to feel that way. I might say this, that uh, when I went aboard to San Francisco, I say I had more clothes still on and everything. I went aboard to San Francisco, the Oklahoma State across the harbor, laying there, and uh, one of the ship's crew in San Francisco, I went over to the side and looked down. All ships has got an armor belt down next to the water line. Both stop, stop for a piece. The Oklahoma had 14 inches. I was looking down over the side, and one of the ship crew said, uh, so what are you looking at? I said, uh, I'm looking how thick that arm pierce is down here. They said, that's eight inches. Don't stop anything that you have to stop. I said, well, let me show you something. And I showed him a belly sticking up over there. I said, that's the old I just come off of. It had 14 inches. It was probably just so big. I said, don't tell me that eight inches. We went to see that afternoon, and I didn't go down the road there to over one. I was scared. Every time I get brave enough, I thought I'd start down to uh, get some heat, which was below the water line. Uh, 
พักเรื่องหมายมามาทักเสียตอนพี่กับนายกูแบนตอนฟ้าแต่นักเสียตอนฟ้าแต่ต้องมาเบอร์ริซาเบนในในรองแคปไรมิทุกแนวแนวอัลเซ็ตก็ตอนฟ้าแนวแนวโปรโมทมาป้ายกันโอเคเป็นเซอร์ฟิสนะครับตอนนี้มาบอกผมเอาเลยเมื่อวานเป็นแบบฟลาสเอาฟรีทาวน์โอ้ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่Pearl Harbor is a memorial that the Arizona is. See a, a bomb went right down the stack of the Arizona. Went down and exploded in a magazine and just blew up. She just said about that. It and the National Cemetery, punch bowl. Uh, this cemetery, the National Cemetery, is built in a great big bowl. I mean, they really keep it up. Hell, how? We've been back three times. Oh, did you have a desire to go back last year since it was the 50th uh, anniversary? Well, I've been back so many times, Mr. Davis. I wouldn't, uh, I would like to win. But the funniest thing, after uh, 49th, every five years we have a reunion at Pearl Harbor. The rest of the, rest of the time, all the years we had it in different places in the United States. And uh, getting ready for the fifth reunion, some of them got the great idea that they'd like to have the, uh, the fifth reunion in Tokyo. Of course, the Japanese body. It didn't take us for a long time to go back there. I didn't feel I didn't feel like I wanted to go to Tokyo on the fifth anniversary of Pearl Harbor. Uh, we uh, we knocked that in the head right away. What do you think the, the number one lesson you learned from Pearl Harbor? To, to keep a good, uh, good armed forces, be alert, and uh, always, always take it serious. You've got to remember one thing: if there are 
get there. It's going to be another smash pack. It's going to be no time for a while. They'll be with uh, atomic weapons, which could very easily destroy, destroy this planet. Very easy. But we need to, we need to stay alert and, uh, and uh, keep a good force, good armed forces, which I think we have. I know it's costly. They pay off. Because we didn't have this force then. But I was amazed how fast that the American people really uh, bumped them down. And uh, after, after the war was declared, it was amazing how they bumped them down. These factories and, and turned out ships, planes, ammunition, you name it, they did. And that, that made us feel good while we was out there fighting. That made us feel good, because we knew that there wasn't going to be no shortage of anything. Because the American people had, had really took it in heart. Anybody else have any questions? Because I've got one, but I've got a couple remaining. Uh, did you ever go back, once you swam the main, I call it the main main, I guess it's way before the island, back over the hospital so Did you ever go back and, uh, out to Fort Island and view the Oklahoma? Last night on that program, reason I asked that, last night on this program, the veteran, I forget what ship it was, but he was in Pearl Harbor and they were interviewed. And he made a statement about they would be standing guard out there and they'd walk up and down at night and they could hear uh, uh, almost until Christmas time. They take it to your people's happy. Right. Now, now on, on the Oklahoma, uh, they, uh, Sunday afternoon, no, Monday morning, they, they had cut uh, 14 survivors out of one compartment on the Oklahoma uh, that were still alive. They, they tapped uh, messages out. And uh, uh, the Navy uh, work crew started using torches cut them out, and they, and they realized that this was a bad idea uh, with uh, the settling them that they was using on the torches would uh, sure kill them. And uh, one place that they was at, the apartment they was at, they just had uh, enough water in there to hold the head above the water to keep them grounded. And uh, then they used a uh, power hammer, power hammer, hammers, chippers to uh, uh, cut them out. And, uh, they didn't get out too many. See, all, all the watertight doors, every compartment has watertight doors, you see. And uh, this compartment over here floods, this, this one is dry. But all of our watertight doors was open, getting ready for inspection. All of our ammunition was down in the locker. And uh, that's the reason, that's reason that uh, the Oklahoma uh, turned over that quick. But there wasn't no compartment, watertight. They had been, they would have kept it in to a certain extent. Anybody else have any questions? I think it's interesting that Mr. Robinson told you about going aboard the USS San Francisco. You mentioned something about the battle <coughs> stars. Is that, if you just engage one ship, is that considered a battle with the ship? No, uh, major engagement is, is when you uh, uh, engage uh, other surfer ships. I know one night off in the uh, uh, water canal, what, what they call the slob. That afternoon we was, uh, took troop ships in on, on road troops in the uh, water canal. And we had our attack that afternoon. And one of the jet planes uh, uh, hit the Frisco uh, on the rear of the ship, dropped over that after that. Killed 17 men that afternoon. Later on that afternoon, the, the transports got unloaded and we headed south. And I figured, well, well, we'll get out of this. We took the transports south for a while and then turned right around and headed to the north again. And that, that, that was uh, on uh, November. That night, we engaged uh, uh, San Francisco and a bunch of light cruisers. It was all in one car. 
going up through the Watagawa Swamp. And the Japanese was coming down at night and bombarding the beaches and uh, trying to land through. And we intercepted There's two columns of them, and we went right through the middle of them. Search lights came on from the battleship, and uh, we engaged two battleships that night. San Francisco and other ships with us. And uh, we disabled one of the battleships so the Marine pilots next next day could uh, sink the battleship. That night, that night, out of, out of capacity of uh, 762 men, we lost over 300 <coughs> in that engagement that night. We lost our admiral, we lost our skipper, our executive officer. On the bridge, where they just blew the bridge up. What done so much damage? That the battleship, the Jap battleship, didn't have one piercing shells in the guns. They had bombardment shells, because that was their purpose, bombarding the beach. The bombardment shells is shelled with shrapnel. They're made out of it. So when they explode, they just throw shrapnel everywhere. That's what done so much damage uh, to San Francisco. And, uh, the hell we know, like cruiser. We lost, uh, we lost the rudder, we couldn't steer, and uh, uh, the hell they know, escorted us out, escorted us back to New Caledonia, and uh, for temporary repairs, and then we came back to uh, uh, San Francisco for major repairs. But we had uh, 19 major engagements. Each major engagement, engagement, you get, you get a bronze star. After you receive five bronze stars, you get a silver star. And uh, uh, right now I have uh, three silver stars, two bronze stars, and a uh, uh, number of other medals, 15 medals, seven medals. But the one that I cherish more, most, is a good conduct. I mean, it means more to me than I would. Because I know I proved myself uh, in a matter that I got to go come up with. I know you won't brag about this, but I'm going to mention it anyway. About the, uh, I think you had for some medal your daughter told me about uh, back first of the school year. Some kind of, is it presidential medal, some kind of a special medal awarded to the Pearl Harbor survivors? Yeah, uh, the government had issued a uh, survivor for the Pearl Harbor attack, uh, a gold medal. Uh, I received mine uh, in the mail. And I, I was notified uh, about three months ago that uh, I, I would probably receive the Congressional Medal of Honor. There's only one person in the state of Kentucky that holds the Congressional Medal of Honor. That's the highest honor that the government can give me. And I've been informed that, uh, that I was going to receive it. Well, I don't know if I wish it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might tell you, uh, my age is 72. I'm 72 <coughs> now. I'd sure like to live long enough to see all of y'all uh, get up, get up years, make it, make it way through life. Set that goal for yourself. Get that education. But that's the most important thing in the world. And don't let nobody fool you. Alcohol and drugs will tear you down. Yeah. It'll take you down. But I've been in the last seven years in court. It makes my heart heavy to see these young people destroy themselves over something that they, they don't have to do. You don't have to do. You might think it's big because uh, my buddy John here to do it. Let John do it and take care of himself. It's not worth it. I'm worth it more than John, really. But I think too much of it. What did you have to do or not do to get the good conduct? Well, what, what did you have to do? Not to get the good conduct of the world. Well, you just, you just uh, kept your nose clean. You 
didn't, uh, he didn't go ill well, or he didn't have to go for a skipper. And, uh, probably just a little. Well, what was your rank at the time? Uh, when I retired, I retired as a chief one officer. After, uh, after the 20 years. My pension, my pension right now is around 1300 a month. You deserve every dime. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? <laughs> Don't be afraid to ask. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. You got just a couple of minutes. Anybody else have John, yeah, there's guys going into the, he's talking about going into what, John? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday I mean. Right. Maybe the seal or something, that's what he'd like to uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Robinson for coming by if nobody else has any questions. Now, I'd like one point he made about the lesson he learned from Pearl Harbor was to be prepared. That's what we've always talked about. That, and I, I think what he's saying about the danger of nuclear weapons and so forth is that if we're well prepared and have a good defense, that might help prevent war. There's two schools of thought on that. A lot of people say, hey, we ought to disarm all of the world. It'd be fine if the whole world disarmed. But as long as the rest of the world disarmed out there uh, or armed, if we disarmed unilaterally, we might be in some serious trouble. And I think that's one of the reasons the Japanese chose to attack Pearl Harbor. Uh, now we want to thank you for coming by here. We sure appreciate what you're coming here. Yeah, I like